Look, it's like I say to people now, football killed, destroyed me, but mm-hmm. it also saved me. I look back at it and I actually cringe about some of the stuff that I did. You know, I was there with good intentions, you know, but I was a bad coach. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, many ways, you know, uh, I'm still a bad coach because otherwise, if I was a great coach, I wouldn't still have a thirst to learn and adapt, you know. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Saying that I'm a capable coach, you know, and that's not doing me a disservice, you know. And, and what's interesting is when you go to a club, so you obviously have your own ethos and your own style of how you want to play. Do you try and bring that to each club that you go to, or is it a case of stepping back and saying, well, what ingredients you have in terms of the players yeah. and the setup? You know, tell us that when you go to each club, what what, what way do you well, go in? The way the way I look at it is, you know, if, if I'm the assistant or the coach, the conversation is quite simple, you know, to the manager, the head coach, whoever you want to call him. Okay, how do you want to play? Mm-hmm. All right, and why? Um, you know, what? How do you want to build up? How do you want to attack? What, what do you want to do when we lose the ball here, here and here? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you just get to the nitty gritty and I go, fine. All right. That, that's how you want to play. That Then my job is to support that. Sure. I'll make suggest things, uh, maybe tinker with a few things through suggestion and conversation. You know, And that might vary week to week as well, depending sometimes on the opponent. You know, I've, I've always been one of these people that if I'm an assistant or the coach, my job, sure, is to is to question the manager. You know, but the reason I do it is obviously I want him to make sure that he makes what he feels is his the right decision for him and the team. Yeah. Now sometimes these guys make a decision and you think to yourself, I don't agree with that. But I've never made I've never done anything other than support who I'm supporting. So even if I've disagreed with it, I go, right, that's what you want, right? We'll go that's your decision, right? We're gonna go with that. Yeah. And never will I never will I ever turn around and talk behind the back going, I'm not sure you should be doing that. Or if we lose, I'd never walk in and go, I told you so. Yeah. Ne- never in a million years. Yeah. So the way that I do it is that I make suggestions, I ask questions, I put thoughts in their heads. They make the final decision. I back it. It's as simple as that. You know, I, I back it so we have that consistency in the message. You know, yeah. clubs will yeah. fall apart if the manager's saying one thing and his staff are saying something else. Your opposition scouting education courses i mean you've had over what is that 1000 individuals that have gone through your courses yeah 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 it's been yeah it's been remarkable I, I used to do it um in person but you know it's difficult with time to drive around the country and deliver courses and then you know obviously i discovered zoom some years ago before everyone else did in the pandemic <laughs> uh, i was just delivering them from home um mm-hmm. so yeah i just teach i do two different courses one's a I wouldn't describe it as a beginner's guide, but it's more like, uh, okay, what, to, what to look for and why, you yeah. know, um, you know, we, we, we'd look at a few video clips and, um, some examples of stuff, you know, and it's quite, it's very interactive, you know, and then, I, then the guys will go away, who do the course and practice, they'll send me in a report, you know, and we'll, we'll critically evaluate it together, mm-hmm. you know, um, the other course that I've started doing, I've only done two of them so far is, it's almost like the next step. So, um, you know, we watch a half of football um, mm-hmm. together and then the guys are put into groups. So one group will, can, can you identify uh, attacking principles, defending principles, and obviously the two transitions between attack and defence, defence and attack. So they go off into breakout rooms. Mm-hmm. So then we, we come back and then everyone between us all, we put together uh, an overview, an objective overview on a team's playing style. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a little bit deeper, you know. So it's you know, the, it's the what you know, what what is the team's playing style and how are they executing it? You know that that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it's something different, and you know, it's been I've done it twice now, and, and the feedback's been pretty good. So um, I'm sure we'll um, do more of it. if anyone listening here would want to get more details and find out more about or take part in one of your courses, what's the easiest way to contact you? Just uh, find me on Twitter at, at Langton Coaching, uh, or you can email me Langton Football Services at gmail.com. Uh, I'm quite easily found. I don't hide. <laughs> we have a weekly feature. And Hugo, I'm going to ask you can you name us your yeah. perfect five aside team? So, firstly, based on your nationality, so what is your English yeah. five aside team? Well, as I said to you, I was thinking about this and I was walking my dog. Uh, <laughs> I found because I know you're going to ask me about the, a world one, and I found that one more straightforward. But I think with the English one, I had to wrestle with a few things, right? So 
you know, I, I've always had question marks over goalkeepers, but I've obviously I've gone for a goalkeeper that had, um, you know, he's got World Cup European experience, you know, Euro experience as well, and um, you know, he's, he's won a lot with his club. So I've gone for David Seaman in goal. Okay, because I think you know that guy is, was it was a very steady Eddie, wasn't he, for a long period of time for the England football team. Yeah, um, I'm going to go with one defender. Okay. Yeah, because imagine, you know, mine's kind of like a moving diamond apart from the bottom of the diamond. Yeah. Or, or outfield players. So I'm going to put Terry Butcher in defence at the bottom, also at the bottom of my diamond, okay? Because mm-hmm. he's, uh, he's hard to beat. No one's going to get past Terry Butcher, especially on a small five-a-side court. Yeah, like, I've still got those scenes with the bandage on the hair and the yeah, blonde over yeah. the top. <laughs> yeah, which brings me nicely on to look, Gazza's, Gazza's straight in there. Yeah. What a player. How can I not have Gaza? I've got I've even got a cat called Gaza named Arthur, <laughs> right? And I've got another cat called Butch after Terry Butcher. Gaza <laughs> Butch, right? That's a true story. All right. Uh, a little insight into into me there. And my yeah. life. Now, so I've got two spots left, right? Peter Beardsley, hundred percent is going yeah, to the team. Love it. Okay. Yeah, you know, Peter Beardsley, what a player. Yeah. Now up front, I had to think about this, right? Because, you know, it's a proud Englishman. You know, I love Gary Lineker. Mm-hmm. But I thought, well, should should it be Lineker, right? And I thought, no. And I'll tell you why, right? Because Lineker was all about being in the box, right? Mm-hmm. And in five aside, you're not allowed in the box, <laughs> right? So Lineker's no use to me, right? <laughs> I love the thought that's really well done to this. <laughs> and I think, well, who could who bangs who bang goals in for fun? And it has to be Shearer for me. Yeah. You know, listen, there's so many players like, you know, Rooney and Scholes and Gerald. I mean, how can I not even mention them? I mean, yeah. uh, you know, it's a difficult thing, but I've tried to find a little bit of a mixture of everything. You know? well, that's amazing. Seaman and Gold, Butcher at the back, Gaza and Beardsley. Oh, that's some creative midfield you've got yeah. there and Shear up top. Yeah. That's a great team. Now, <laughs> here's the thing. Now, as we go into your worldwide five-a-side yeah. team, does anybody retain their place in your worldwide five-a-side team? Well, Gaza should do, but for the for the for this conversation, he's not going to. You'll understand why in a minute. I mean, Gaza was wow. I mean, he was he was all of our hero. Yeah, as a footballer, you know, wow, you know, and uh, but no, <laughs> in answer to your question, no. I, I randomly spoke to Gaza on the phone uh, uh, there during lockdown, probably at, around the summertime. Randomly, yeah. one of my one on one students, <laughs> the part. Knows him and uh, well, says, There's somebody on the phone wants to speak to you. It's Gaza. I went, nah, No way. And yeah, Gaza, randomly speaking to Gaza on the phone during my one on one lesson with this kid. Wow. And I well, was like, thinking, Gaza, what about you? Know, what are you up to? He says, I'm watching the chase. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, That is mint. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. You know, what a guy. What an he's proud of himself. He's got the last uh, three questions. He answered the last three questions correctly in the chase. So there you go. Well done, Gaza. <laughs> there you go. They're probably all football, football or fishing, weren't they? Yeah. 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 